Hello to everyone. Thanks for joining me for another video in this video series called X the Transition. We are busy with part number four in this series and uh, we continue to use Acts as a catalyst, the verses of course in the book of Acts, to jump us into the transition that of course naturally happens through the book of Acts and also into dispensational truths. All right, to understand the, the, the Bible from a dispensational point of view. So let's jump into part number four of this video series, and we will be using another verse or two or three to, uh, to jump into everything we can learn about not just Acts, but also, of course, dispensational truth. Let me jump into the appropriate scripture area. So we are in Acts chapter 1, and we're going to have a look specifically at verse 4 in this case. But just before we get into verse 4, can I just remind you again, because of the importance of this, is that we are still in 30 AD. Right? Remember that this is where Jesus and his 11 apostles, remember Judas is not on, in the picture here at the moment, his 11 apostles and Jesus are on the Mount of Olives and Jesus is just about to ascend back into heaven after uh, dealing for 40 days between his resurrection and his ascension with uh, things pertaining to the kingdom, teaching kingdom principles and uh, doctrine, right, and uh, revealing himself to people as proof of his resurrection, etc. But now he is here on the, uh, uh, the Mount of Olives, and he's giving his disciples the last of his commandments, in particular the great commission that they had, all right, and some instructions as to go and wait in Jerusalem for the coming of the Holy Spirit, etc. And the importance here is also to understand that we are still 100% holy under the dispensation of prophecy or the kingdom or law, right? Remember, Paul is not yet on the scene. He has not yet encountered the Lord on the road to Damascus. And, we, and Paul has not even received any instructions or doctrine with regard to the grace period, the dispensation of grace. So we are completely still under this dispensation of kingdom for Israel. All right, so it's good to keep that in mind because uh, that is the context of the scriptures that come out here. All of it, in other words, for Israel, for the Jews. Okay, now the topic of this particular video is the Jews first. And where I get this topic from and why I'm branching into just discussing a little bit more in detail, why do we find occurrences in the Gospels and even in Paul's early epistles regarding Jews first. Why is it so significant that Jews are first? All right, I will show you some scriptures as we get along through this study, but um, let me just bring you the verse, the, the key verse uh, that we are, are dealing with in this particular video. So Acts chapter 1 and verse 4 reads the following, and being assembled together with them, that is Jesus and his 11 apostles on the foot of the Mount of Olives, right? He commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father that he had uh, spoken to them about throughout his earthly ministry. Specifically, if you read through John chapter 14, 15 and 16. But uh, here Jesus is commanding them not to, de to depart from Jerusalem. Now, it's a specific command that, right? And we know, of course, as we will see with scriptures I'll show shortly, that during his earthly ministry, he said, don't go to the Gentiles, don't even go into the cities of the Samaritans, but preach the gospel here only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay, but yet we find when he talks about the Holy Spirit, he gives them instructions where they can start going out into uh, the provinces in Jerusalem and eventually out into the whole world, if we look at the Great Commission, as per se. But uh, it just boils down again that this particular statement, do not depart from Jerusalem, it just brought me to that uh, thought. Why was it so explicit? Why was Jesus so explicit with his disciples that they should not 
go to anyone else but the Jews in Jerusalem. And then after the Holy Spirit would come upon them, then they would filter out into the various provinces in Israel and eventually into the whole of the world. We also see, by the way, just to enhance what I'm saying here, Paul, even in his early ministry, always said to the Jews first. Paul always went into the synagogues first to try and convince the Jews of salvation. Why not the Gentiles? I mean, his whole uh, ministry, he was the apostle to the Gentiles. Why didn't he just go straight out to the Gentiles? So these are questions that I always encourage you to ask. You know, when it comes to Bible study and things, ask questions, right? Delve into it. See what you can pull out from, from confirmations from other parts of the Bible so that you can learn. Right, and understand this great plan of salvation and the redemption of humanity in God's great plan, right? the, the big picture, as I call it. But uh, let's delve into this particular question. Right? If you've never asked it before, if you've never heard or got an answer from it before, why did Jesus and even Paul, why did they always go Jews first? What was so special, Jews first, all right, to the Jews first, then to the Gentiles? Why? Okay, so let's delve into this a little bit more, and I'm going to just jump into the first part. Now, the first three bulleted points here is again just the uh, the question, right? This is just as I delved into this and asked these questions and saw this pattern coming through. Throughout Jesus' earthly ministry, don't go to the Gentiles. Don't go into the city of the Samaritans. Uh, go only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But when he gave instructions with regard to the Holy Spirit, right, there just before his ascension. He said, go and wait in Jerusalem and wait for the Holy Spirit, right? Then you can go out into Jerusalem and then into Judea and then into Samaria, which is further out, right, uh, out going into the Gentile provinces and then into the whole world as part of the Great Commission. Uh, as we read in Matthew 28 and in Mark 16, uh, the Great Commission, Jesus says, go out into all the world, proclaim the gospel to all creatures. Okay, so there they weren't limited now anymore. But the question again is, why was Jesus so explicit? What, what is significant about this particular these particular commands and the fact that they had to stay in Jerusalem and only limit their ministry to Jews. But after the Spirit came, they could go out systematically into all of the world. So it all actually comes down to a promise that God made with Abraham, right? Way out there in Genesis chapter 12. And that is the bottom line to it. Right, I'm going to jump straight in to the bottom line. Right, This is the reason why Jesus was so explicit and why Paul in his early ministries and in his early epistles was, was continually trying to convince Jews first. All right, uh, So let's have a look at the, the bottom line to this and then we'll delve into some other little details I just want to mention. Okay, so I'd like to start here in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 7 and 8, and then have a look at that covenant promise that God made with Abram. And this will bring us to an understanding that way up the line, eventually when we get into Jesus' earthly ministry, why he was so explicit with these commands that the Jews don't go into any other areas, right? That they focus just on Jerusalem and the Jews uh, itself. So let's uh, quickly have a look here at Deuteronomy chapter 7. I think I'm there already. Yeah, this is, sorry, that's a siren going by. But nevertheless, here it's uh, it's one of my favorite scriptures in the Old Testament, you know, with regard to, to how God uh, will accomplish his purpose for Israel come the end of the time when the millennial kingdom is up and running. Let's read the scripture quickly. It's Deuteronomy chapter 7, verses 7 and 8. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor chose you because you were more in number than any other people. For you were fewest of all people, but the Lord, but because the Lord loved you and because he would keep, very important, yes, the uh, crux, 
because he would keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers. Hath the Lord therefore brought you out with a mighty hand? All right, obviously that was bringing them out of Egypt, out of slavery. But a very key component of that verse in verse number eight is that the Lord would keep the oath that he swore with your fathers. Now, who's Israel's fathers? Well, it's Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. But the Lord made a covenant promise with Abraham way out there in the beginning when he called Abraham out of his country and his father's house and his family all right, and said, go into a land that I will show you. And during that time, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, a blood covenant as of sorts, because Abraham carved in two a, 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 a goat and a heifer right, and uh, birds and so forth. And he laid them out according to the Lord's instructions. And then the Lord, this is in Genesis chapter 15, the Lord put Abraham to sleep and the Lord himself walked between those separated animals, right? The uh, cut up animals. And uh, the Lord made this covenant with Abraham that, the, that Israel, basically the children that come from Israel, the nation of Israel, Israelites in the flesh, in other words, would be blessed of God. So let's have a look at not the covenant itself, not when the Lord passed through those uh, those uh, those animals, but uh, let's go right here back into Genesis chapter 12 from verse 1. And uh, let's just uh, take, take it from uh, verse number 2 here. And I will make you, this is the Lord promising Abraham now, that that. Israel, that, that basically the children that come from and eventually form the nation of Israel, that the Lord will bless them, that he will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you and make your name great. And, I, and you will be a blessing. And again, the crux of this particular promise is in verse 3 there. And I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curses you. And in you, Israel, in you shall all families of the earth be blessed. That is all nations. In other words, the nations of the earth will receive blessing through Israel. All right. Now, I must just mention, obviously, at this point in time, with you and I today, we are in a dispensation of grace and the Lord is working completely differently in this grace dispensation, right? Because this was made uh, under a different dispensation. This was the call of Abraham and a promise that the Lord would make of Abraham and his descendants a great nation and that the rest of the world will be blessed because of Israel. All right. That is under the... Uh, the dispensation of law under the Israel program. And of course, this is going to be fulfilled come the millennial kingdom. That's when Israel is going to be that highly esteemed nation. And because of them, the rest of the nations will be blessed. But right now, just to make sure you're clear about it, is that this is not the current program. Right? The kingdom program, the prophetic program for Israel has been closed to a, in a temporary way at this point of time. And until the church, the body of Christ is raptured out of here, the program itself will continue to remain closed. Once we have been raptured out of here, God reactivates this Israel program under law, the prophetic program. And this is where Israel, again, will become the nation highly esteemed. And the Lord will bless them to such a mighty degree. And they themselves will then be the blessing to the rest of the nations on earth. Okay, and that ha happens out there after the tribulation in the millennial kingdom period. It is important to understand that, right? Again, this is where dispensational truth comes into play. 
this is of course where I have this little graphic that uh, alright it's a little bit further up if I just get back over here all right, that's where these little images come into play again. This is a completely different dispensation from the mystery dispensation, which is under the body of Christ. This is where we're in today. All right, but uh, currently from Abraham all the way through to Jesus Christ and even into the ho halfway through the book of Acts, this is the dispensation of prophecy or law and God's focus is entirely on Israel at this point of time. So just bear that in mind, right? And this is, of course, where it reactivates. So in other words, after the tribulation, when Jesus comes back at his second coming to save Israel, the, this reactivates that kingdom program, and we enter into that thousand-year kingdom program again under the earthly reign of Jesus Christ as King of kings and Lord of lords. And this is where everything reactivates again. And, and Israel will be that highly esteemed nation above all other nations. We will actually learn about this, how absolutely esteemed and, and revered they are in that millennial kingdom. We'll be looking at prophecies in our next video, right? But until we get there, we are covering just why Jews are first. So let's not digress too far out into the blessings and that, which they will definitely experience in this in this period of time. But uh, just to get back to our uh, our text here, all right. So we were we I've read Deuteronomy chapter seven verse seven, which talks about the fact that the Lord, according to the promise that He made to Abraham in Genesis chapter twelve, right that um, all of the nations, all of the families of the earth will be blessed through Israel. All right? Please note, this is the bottom line to this whole scenario, why the Jews are first. The promise God made, the covenant that he made with Abraham, is that they will be blessed, that uh, others will be blessed because of Israel, and others will be cursed if they curse Israel. And through Israel, all the families of the earth will be blessed. Now, that's the promise God made. Now, in Deuteronomy, we saw that the Lord saved and kept Israel because of the oath that he made with their fathers. And the oath, of course, was that promise, that covenant promise that was made with Abraham in Genesis chapter 12. So the Lord effectively is bound by his word over the over Israel and of course the plan of God the greater picture of the salvation of humanity at this point of time right during the the uh, the dispensation of law and prof prophecy under Israel at this point of time God uh, plans to use Israel as the vehicle as the tool in his hand to reach the Gentiles. And so Gentiles were not able to be saved until God finished preparing the Jews, making them that kingdom of priests. And a priest, again, is someone who stands as a mediator between God and the nations. So he was preparing and forming Israel right, to be the priests, that kingdom of priests and that holy nation that would take his word out to the nations. That was the purpose of Israel in God's great plan. And this is why, and this is all bound to what God promised Abraham, according to that covenant, right? And then God even saying uh, that he was bound, that his focus was on Israel because of that oath that he made with Abraham. Okay, so when we come up to Jesus, and his earthly ministry, we see very clearly that Jesus could not go to the Gentiles, right? In actual fact, in his three years of earthly ministry, or a little bit more of earthly ministry, he only ministered to two Gentiles, a Canaanite woman, which we'll see just now, and a Roman centurion. Both of them were exceptions because of the great faith that they demonstrated at the time of asking for help from Jesus. But other than those two, Jesus never ministered to any other Gentiles. His entire focus 
was on the nation of Jews and to bring them the kingdom uh, gospel for that salvation and also to teach them of the doctrine of the kingdom, which was the way that he would rule out there in that millennial kingdom. Okay, so have a look at Matthew chapter 5, sorry, chapter 10, verse 5. This is just a confirmation where Jesus says he was sending out his 12 disciples at that point to go and preach the gospel. And he says, go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans enter you not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. All right, very, very explicit in this regard. Okay, also, as we continue down, we have another example of this explicit nature of Jesus' commands to not go anywhere, not, not to minister to Gentiles. Again, remember the reason behind this, really the only reason behind this, is because of that oath that God made with Abraham. And the fact that God's greater plan for the salvation of humanity at this point of time, right before Paul was was uh, uh, saved and before he got a different dispensational message, during this time, God's focus was over Israel because of his oath and because of his plan to make Israel a nation of priests, a holy nation separated unto himself so that they could take the word out to the nations and be the salvation for the rest of the world. So Jesus was under this command, under this um, word that was spoken, right, uh, so many years before to Abraham. So here's another incident here with this Canaanite woman. We have a Gentile woman from, the, uh, from Canaan running up to Jesus one day and saying, Jesus, help my daughter. She is vexed with the devil. And Jesus ignores her. You'll, you can read about this in Matthew chapter 15. Right? Jesus initially ignores her and he continues walking. And then she cries out again and Jesus help my daughter. And the disciples around Jesus were eventually starting to get irritated with this woman. And so they said, Jesus, what's happening here? And Jesus continued to ignore her. So eventually she comes and she cries out. And we take it up here from this verse 24. But he answered and said, I'm not sent. Right? Jesus mentions to this woman as she comes and cries out, Jesus, help me. He says, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. We've heard that before, Matthew chapter 10. Then she came and worshipped him one more time, right? Persistent woman. And she came and worshipped him saying, Lord, help me. But he answered it. I mean, now. You know, you don't hear this teaching in the churches today. You know, how pastors teach, saying how Jesus ignored healing and helping this woman. You you don't hear it often. But the word is the word, and there's the scripture right in front of you. But he also said, it is not meat. Now, this is the King James Version translation. Basically means, it is not good or proper to take the children's bread and to cast it to the dogs. What does Jesus actually mean here? Why does he call, why does he say dogs? What is the children's bread? Okay, let's, let's just break this down quickly. Not complex at all. It comes down, Jesus says, it is not proper for me to take the blessings which belong to Israel all right. Remember again, this was the blessings of that the Lord said, and I will bless you and make your name great and you will be a blessing. This was part of the covenant that God made with Abraham. And Jesus is saying it's not proper. It's not acceptable for me at this time to take these blessings that belong to Israel and to cast it to the dogs. Now, the dogs here is in reference to Gentiles. During this time, during Jesus' earthly ministry, Gentiles were referred to as dogs. It was part of slang language at that time, right? Because Gentiles were so unref they they didn't have the law, right? They were defiled. Uh, they ate 
meat that was offered to idols, right? They, they were idol worshippers, etc. So the uh, Jews, the law-abiding Jews, referred to them because of that state that they were in, because they were without God, all right? They called them dogs. It was just slang at that time. So Jesus is saying, yeah, I can't take the blessings of Israel and give them to the Gentiles. That's why I cannot heal. I cannot, I cannot uh, respond to you. At this. this is really what Jesus was saying to this woman. And Jesus was bound under his ministry to focus only upon the Jews because the purpose of God at this point of time, according to that covenant he made with Abraham, was that the Jews had to be saved first. They had to be shaped and formed. They had to become that kingdom of priests and that holy nation. All right. And once they were that, once all of Israel was saved, and in that state before God, they would then become the blessing for the rest of the nations, taking God's word and God's blessings and God's uh, healing and so forth out to, to the uh, Gentile nations. That, of course, will occur in the millennial kingdom, right? During that, uh, that kingdom, when all prophecy is going to be fulfilled during that time. But at this point of time, it does not apply because we are completely in a different dispensation at this point. God is working completely differently. Today, there is no Jew and Gentile, no slave or free, no male, female. All right, today is all, all are one. Right, the body of Christ, those that have responded to the grace gospel, of uh, have become members of the body of Christ. Whether we Jew, uh, Gentile, male, female, slave or free, we are all members of the body of Christ, and we are all equal. All right, there's no distinctions between race and genders and whatever else at this point of time. But in the kingdom program, under the dispensation of prophecy and law for Israel, Israel is highly esteemed. Israel is first. Israel is the head and not the tail. Right? God is over Israel and the Gentiles have nothing. All right? They will receive via Israel according to God's plan. Okay, so there's a big distinction here, again, between these two uh, dispensations. So that's why we have to understand dispensational theology, dispensational truth. So we need to understand it so clearly so that we can see what's happening here. All right, so this is really what Jesus was saying. Gentiles cannot yet receive the blessings that were promised to Israel until Israel is prepared and ready and blessed themselves. All right. The last scripture there is just so beautiful, though. Right? This just shows the character of God because uh, she says, Truth, Lord, she acknowledges her lowly position and the, the, uh, the esteemed position of Israel. She says, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs that fall off the master's table. For me, that is such an incredible answer. And of course, something that just stirred Jesus at that point of time, right? It showed faith. And of course, we know from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11 that nothing pleases God except faith, right? Faith pleases the Lord. And this faith that this woman de demonstrated just simply by that answer, but she was the crumbs that fall from the master's table. He, us dogs can have that. And that was sufficient for Jesus to make this absolute exception, right? In this case, to say, and, and he said, your daughter has been healed. Okay, so it is critical for us to understand this little incident here and to understand that during Jesus' ministry, all right, unlike today, during Jesus' ministry, the Jews were entirely in God's focus, not the Gentiles. They were being prepared, right? They were being uh, taught. And uh, Jesus was giving them the kingdom gospel and the doctrine in order to bring them to salvation. And it was all the Jews and the Jews only. And the Jews were first, first, first the whole time. All right. We see it even in Paul, all right, in his early writings. 
have a look uh, at um, this verse here in Romans chapter 1 verse 16. Paul writes here in his early epistles, right? He's focused. Remember, Paul was a Jew as well, right? Paul was a Jew through and through from the tribe of Benjamin, he says. And his focus initially was to save Israel as well. He always went to the synagogues first. And he always tried to convince Jews to be saved because Paul knew that if the whole of Israel could come to salvation, all right, then Jesus could come again. But uh, of course, we know in hindsight, if we read and continue to go through the book of Acts, we know that the Jews were hard hearted and we know that they continued to disbelieve and God eventually closed this dispensation, this kingdom dispensation for Israel and opened up an entirely different program for the Gentiles, all right, uh, and sent Paul out to, to, to bring a different gospel and a different doctrine. And that is why we as Gentiles today are saved under the gospel of the grace of God apart from Israel. As, it, as it's completely different, all right? The whole dispensation and the way that God operates today since Paul, right, is completely different to that kingdom program. Yet this will be reactivated again when we are raptured out of here. But nevertheless, Romans 1 verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, Paul writes, of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believes, to the Jew first. This was when Paul was still under that mindset. Maybe I can save the Jews. Maybe I can bring salvation to the Jews first. And then the whole program of God's um, salvation could then continue. In other words, that Jesus could come again. If we have a look at Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Let's just get back to my online Bible here. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Have a look at what Paul writes here. Brethren, right, referring to the Jews here, right? Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Specific to Israel. Paul is talking here directly. My heart is that Israel be saved. Because if Paul could bring them into salvation, not just some Jews, all of the nation of Israel, then Jesus could come again, right? That would be the program. That's how God has set it out, right? If Israel can be saved, then Jesus can come and establish that kingdom on earth, which reverts everyone and everything back to uh, similar to before the uh, sin, right? In the Garden of Eden. Okay, so that's Paul's heart at this point during his, his early ministry. Uh, if I just scroll up here to the beginning of um, chapter 9 here. All right, have a look at this. For I wish, I could wish that, Paul writing again, that myself were accursed from Christ. For my brethren, that being Israel, my kinsmen, according to the flesh, who are Israelites. Paul is saying, I wish I could be accursed myself so that Israel can be saved. All right, this was Paul's focus at this point, right? Paul also, of course, went out to the Gentiles and established Gentile churches, but he always went first to the Jews to try and convince them as such. This, of course, fell away come Acts 28. If I just maybe get to that little verse as well. Uh, this, is, this would be useful when you have a timeline now. If you see through Acts uh, uh, 16, 17, 18, when Paul wrote the first of his uh, uh, epistles, all right, Galatians and Romans and 1 and 2 Corinthians during uh, Acts, between Acts, uh, let's say, 16, 17 through to Acts 28, all right, even Romans was uh, written during that period of time that is documented by Luke through Acts. But have a look right at the end of Acts, chapter 28 and even verse 28. Paul says a statement here, which clarifies that he is now of the mind and convinced that there is no more hope 
for the Jews. Paul writes here, Jews were coming into, he was in prison at this, this time and uh, he, was, he was housed in a, in a little villa of some kind and, the, and he could receive visitors. And the Jews would come and inquire of him in the, this time. But uh, Paul eventually gave up trying to convince Jews about their Messiah, Jesus Christ and salvation and so forth. And he eventually says here, because of the hardness of your heart, you will have dull ears of hearing. Your heart is vexed, right? And he says, be it known therefore unto you, Israel, that the salvation of God is sent unto the Gentiles and that they will hear it. So this verse effectively is just saying from Paul's perspective, from this point onwards, only my focus, Paul says, is only going to be to the Gentiles now because Jews will just not believe. Their heart is hardened. Their, <laughs> their heart is hardened and their ears are closed and they just won't hear. Just an interesting fact on this point is from this point onwards, after Acts 28, right, Paul is now in prison, and you'll notice in his prison epistles, specifically Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and possibly some others afterwards, you will notice very clearly that there is no references to the Old Testament. You'll notice, for instance, Galatians, Ephesians, uh, Galatians uh, 1 and 2 Corinthians, uh, Romans, Paul often quotes from the Old Testament, right? And he brings in a, 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 co a content of Isaiah and Jeremiah and these in, into his writings. In Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, you find absolutely no quotations coming from the Old Testament. And you also don't find any references to Judaism. In other words, to their customs and their traditions and no references specific to Jews. All right. Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians are outright, as he mentions here, I'm turning to the Gentiles. My focus is now entirely to the Gentiles. OK. And um, of course, salvation was still open to the Jews at that point, because remember, Jews and Gentiles were alike at this point. There was no Jew, no Gentile. All right. Uh, the grace gospel was open to all who would hear. Uh, and, the, and the churches at that time were still mixtures of the majority Gentiles with a few Jews. But uh, at the end of the day, Paul's focus now was entirely uh, to the Gentiles without any references to the Old Testament uh, scriptures and to customs and uh, traditions of the Jews and things like that. So um, just interesting, right? There, This is just, again, the progression of this uh, this program and how things are uh, 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 pro progressed according to this. But up till this time, it was always Jews first. Okay, even in Paul, as I say, in his early ministry. Okay, so there's the X28 uh, reference that I was talking about. Uh, that Paul stopped trying to convince Jews after that time. Okay, there's other references of Scripture that uh, is just interesting to take note of, right? Acts uh, 2 verse 36, Peter on the day of Pentecost in his uh, preaching of the gospel, the focus was Jews first. Sorry, Jews first again, right? There it says, Therefore let all of the house of Israel know assuredly that God has made this same Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized Every one of you, Jews, his audience was Jews at that time. Romans 11 verse 26, and so all of Israel shall be saved, as it is written, therefore, all right, but again, a reference, Jews first. That's really what I'm just trying to pull through here. Just to start wrapping up on this video, there is, of course, prophecies coming through in Isaiah, how and it speaks again to this program of God for the Jews, right? How the Jews had to be saved first before the salvation could go out to the Gentiles. And how some incredibly interesting scriptures here talking about how a nation will be born in a day and Israel shall be saved, all right? 
Uh, that, of course, will happen absolutely at the end of the tribulation when Jesus comes again. But um, a very interesting little verse, this one. Let me just give some context quickly. In the tribulation, come the midpoint where the Antichrist goes into the temple and defiles it, all right, and sets himself up to say, I am God, right? At that point, a third of the Jews will come to the realization that the Antichrist is not their Messiah, and they will turn and flee to the wilderness to escape the, the persecution and the killings, right, um, of the Jews. So uh, only a third, right? Again, that's prophecy, okay? But a third flee out into the wilderness, and God will protect them there during the last half of the tribulation period. And when the tribulation comes to an end, when Jesus comes back down at his second coming and sets his feet on the Mount of Olives again, it's at this point that that remnant, that third of the Jews that fled out into the wilderness, they will, be, they will receive the Holy Spirit. They will receive that new covenant promise all right, that Jesus set up uh, there in the upper room when he said, and this cup is the new covenant in my blood. All right, but this, the Holy Spirit, according to prophecies, again, in Ezekiel and in Jeremiah, God will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And that is the remnant Jews there in the wilderness. And they will receive the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. They will receive that new heart and that new spirit. And the law will be written upon their heart. And they will become that kingdom of priests and that holy nation. And it's at that exact point that we see the scripture, Isaiah. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such a thing? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in a day, in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? And that born at once is the rebirth of Israel as the Holy Spirit is poured out upon them. All right? And they become that kingdom of priests and that holy nation for God. And they enter into the millennial kingdom as this esteemed, highly revered people of God, where God is so upon them and they will go out and take the word of God out to the nations. All right. So uh, that we will actually have a look at, as I've mentioned before now, in our next video. But uh, for now, this is why... At this point, when these prophecies were made, when Jesus was in his earthly ministry, all up until the conversion of Paul, we are dealing with God's focus entirely on Israel for the purpose of saving them in order to bring them into that, that, uh, that, that purpose of being the, the uh, people of God that kingdom of priests to take the blessing that he promised in that covenant with Abraham out to the Gentile nations. That will be fulfilled come the millennial kingdom. Okay, there's the scripture with regard to a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus 19 verse 5. There is a scripture here, and I'll end with this. Acts 3 verse 25 which is also very interesting, which again mentions, right? This is in Acts chapter 3, before Paul's conversion still, right? Where uh, unto you first, just, just yet another uh, um, uh, example of the Jews were first during this period of time. Peter here is preaching here. He says, you are the children of the prophets, referring, of course, to Israel. And of the covenant which God made with our fathers, saying unto Abraham, And in thy seed shall all the kindred of the earth be blessed. In other words, in Israel will all the nations of the world be blessed. Unto you first, God, having raised up his son Jesus, sent him to bless you, that is Israel, in turning away every one of you from your iniquities. Now, that's the scripture itself taken from the uh, King James, Acts 3, verse 25 and 26. 
just a paraphrase on this if i can just read that paraphrase just to bring even more clarity to it it's as if you can understand it in this way since you peter would say are the children of the prophets and of the covenant that god made with abraham the first offers of salvation belong to you that you israel and god makes them to you israel the great commission of jesus christ in other words that, that his earthly ministry is directed sorry <laughs> i thought that sounded strange not the great commission the great mission of jesus christ his whole earthly ministry of that, those three years is directed to you jews that you may be saved from your sins god has designed to bless you first but it is by turning each one of you away from your sins so that's really what peter was was uh, prophesying and was preaching uh, after the, the uh, day of pentecost talking to the jews then saying you are first you're first in line all right and if you do come into salvation then the rest of the nations can be blessed because of you but they were hard of heart they didn't hear and god had to close the program by the way not taking god by surprise of course let me just mention the whole plan from start to finish all right of the redemption of mankind and the restoration of everything we know of ex uh, uh, that is created god planned out before the heavens and the earth were even made of course god knew that they would not believe and that's why god designed and 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 made paul to, to bring paul to the point that he would then go out as the apostle of the gentiles but god had a plan between these two programs as well to fill heaven and earth with uh with his children with the uh with the redeemed and that uh, and to bring glory to jesus christ in both realms heaven and earth all right so that's all planned out right this was this was not taking god by surprise this was always going to be but during this time of course peter and paul and jesus was preaching specifically to the jews in the point of of bringing them to salvation and if of course a big if if they had come to salvation as the whole nation of course god's program would have continued and jesus would have come again all right and eternity would have started but there we go that's i hope that gives you a little bit of insight into why in the gospels and even in acts and even in the first few of paul's epistles we constantly are hearing this thing to the jew first all right or where emphasis is put to jews first jews are always first 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 okay um, this is why it all boils down to that covenant promise that god made with abram that jews will be blessed first and through them blessing will go out to the nations all right and the whole earthly ministry of jesus was to bring jews to that point all right that they are blessed that they could receive the holy spirit that they could become that kingly priesthood all right and uh, and then take the blessing to the nations but of course their hard-heartedness caused god to open up a whole new dispensation which by the way again just shows you how completely different this dispensation is that you and i are in today under grace without the use of israel all right yet when we are raptured out of here that whole program kicks back into into play again and through israel the nations who are within the, the millennial kingdom are going to be taught and hear the word of god and receive the blessing of god because of israel so those prophecies will certainly come to realization and fulfillment all right so there it is i trust that gave you a little bit of insight into jews first why you constantly hear that and we will continue uh, working ourselves through the book of acts pulling out scriptures to just learn about god's word and learn uh, whatever can we can to edify ourselves and uh, help us to understand this great plan of god for the salvation of humanity thanks for joining me on this video i will see you in the next one